Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights. I am the Reverend Carla Kometer, and with us today are Steve and Mirabai, who are Heart Dreams, some of our favorite musical guests. I'm going to start PowerPoint now and put up the lyrics to our opening song, which is Stand and invite Stephen Mirabai to lead us and you may sing along at home. We're happy to be here today. One, two, three, four. We want to welcome everyone this morning, those who are joining us on Zoom and those who are joining us on Facebook Live. Also know that the service is being recorded and will be available on our Facebook page, on YouTube, and on our website. So you have no excuse, you have no excuse. So let us open our service by sharing today's daily word. Today is Sunday, July 3rd, 2022, and the word for today is free. Living from my Christ nature sets me free. As a spiritual being, I am always free. I remember this at those moments I feel at the mercy of an unpredictable world. While I may not be able to control what happens around me, I can take comfort knowing I don't need to. I am free to choose my response, but even more, I am free to meet life from my divinity, the breadth of my spiritual power. In prayer, I claim divine ideas. I use my gift of imagination to envision the life I wish to live and the gift of will to make choices to bring it about. I speak affirmations to raise my consciousness and help create conditions for my highest and best outcomes to manifest. I find precious freedom realizing that life doesn't happen to me. Life happens through me. And our scripture for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 36. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And the word for today is free. And now we're going to um, invite Steve and Mirabai we have a tradition. It's a tradition because this is the second year we've done it and, and we intend to continue with our own version of a, um, an Independence Day song, a national anthem, if you will. So I'm going to put up the lyrics and you can sing along at home as we give homage to the city of New Orleans. Riding on the city of New Orleans, Illinois Central, Monday. 
Sunday morning red Fifteen cars and fifteen restless riders Three conductors and twenty-five sacks of mail all along the southbound Odyssey, the train pulls out at Kankakee, rolls along past houses, farms, and fields. Passing trains that have no name in the freight yards from where they came, and the graveyards of the rusted automobile. Good morning. games with the old men in the club car penny a point and no one keeping score past the paper bag that holds the bottle feel the wheels rumbling beneath the floor and the sons of Pullman porters and the sons of engineers ride their father's magic carpets made of steel. Mothers with their babes asleep are rocking to the gentle beat and the rhythm of the rails is all they feel. Good morning. Don't you know me? I'm your native son. I'm the train that called the city of New Orleans. I'll be gone 500 miles when the day is done. Changing cars in Memphis, Tennessee. Halfway home, we'll be there by morning. Through the Mississippi darkness, rolling down to the sea. But all the towns and people seem to fade into a bad dream. And the steel rail still ain't hurt. The conductor sings his songs again. The passengers will please refrain. This train got the disappearing railroad blue. Good night, America. How are you? Say, don't you know me? I'm your native son. I'm the train they call. Be gone 500 miles when the day is done. Jolly good. Jolly good. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mirabai. Thank you. Our feature at today is called Let There Be Peace or Let There Be Peace on Earth. And it is about the country of Costa Rica and how they decided to have no more army. And they decided this in 1948. So, 
I have been to Puerto Rico, I mean, Costa Rica. I went in about 2009. And as always, the teacher and me went out and we must first have our map. And this is North America, this is South America, and this is Central America. However, Central America is really part of the continent of North America. It's a region in the continent of North America. And South America begins right where Panama joins Colombia. And this is a close up of Central America of the seven countries there. And Costa Rica is right here. One of the things they shared when I was there was because of the fact that they've got this kind of protection. They're in this kind of curve in the land. They don't have a lot of problems with hurricanes. It's not a big risk there. Now, if we were going to have a travelogue this morning, I would be sharing many things about Costa Rica, including the huge giant bugs they showed us when we visited the banana plantation. I would be sharing about the four kinds of monkeys they have, of which we got to see all of them, squirrel, uh, the howler, the capuchin, oh, there's one more spider monkeys. And I would share how wonderful it was to sleep in the rainforest in a hut that only had screens for walls. And how exciting it was to take a zip line 1500 feet above the canopy of the rainforest. But this is not a travel log and so we're going to talk about the impact of not having an army for all these years. When I went on this tour, a girlfriend of mine and her husband were there and her husband kept on commenting on the wires. This on the right is a picture of a highway in Costa Rica. It looks like dirt to me, but they call it a highway. And you can see good repair of all the the lines and the utilities. I didn't understand why Tom was so impressed until a year later I went to China. And this picture on the left is a picture of old, old Beijing and and how they ended up having all of their wires connected at the pole. And I could understand then why Tom was impressed and what it means to be in a country that has good public utilities. This takes us to talking about the quality of life in Puerto Rico. They have public utilities, virtually all the people have cell phones. They may live in a in a wooden, it looks like a shack to us, but they don't need much more because of the climb there. And these posters are part of the celebration of their, it'll be 75 years next year without an army. Keep calm and love Costa Rica, no army since 1948. And this one, this Pura Vida, Pura Vida means uh, the pure life or the simple life. And, and it is one of the slogans used that associated with their having no army. Another thing that is related to having no army is that you don't have to support your military. The taxes that they pay, they don't have a huge proportion going to support a military as we do in the United States. They do have a police force though. They have mandatory public education in the younger ages. The universities are very, very affordable. Healthcare is very, very affordable. They have a very high literacy rate and a very low infant mortality rate and all the things that are important to having a simple life or a pure light, they excel.
in Costa Rica. There is a Unity Church in San Jose in the capital, and that church was involved in a program called the Be Peace program for many years. And, and a lot of people from Unity visited Costa Rica and were involved in training and, and other activities related to Be Peace. Well, that program has changed now, and it's called the Connection Practice. And this is their website. Sheila Ford, who was our guest speaker last week, is involved with this. And um, I asked her what website would be good to share with you. And then I got on and looked at it. And one of the things I found out is that there are two trips to Costa Rica being planned, group trips with the connection practice people later this year, one in uh, the summer and one in, in the fall. So you might want to check that website if you're interested in it. What I like about this is it gives me hope for the future. It gives me hope that there can be a different way of living. It can be a simpler way of living. It can be a purer way of living with different priorities. I really enjoyed going to Costa Rica and who knows, I might go back. So I wanted to thank you as always for listening to the featurette and now we're going to put up the lyrics to this is my song and um, know that this was written by Jean Sibelius. <clears throat> so this song is like a song from the heart that many countries sing and originated I think in is it Finland yeah it's in Finland This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country
Thank you. Thank you, Stephen Mirabai. Such a touching song. So we're going to take a moment now to bless our prayer requests. When we meet in person at the Southern Community Center, we have a, a prayer box and forms you can fill out. But you can always send a prayer request to us. You can send it to our email address, which is at the top of this um, page. And you can also contact Silent Unity whenever you need. You can phone them, you can send a prayer request online or with the YouPray app for your phone, you can send them some mail. So know that the Unity Movement was founded on prayer and that prayer has been continuous for about 150 years at Silent Unity. So when we pray, we imagine each beloved enfolded in a brilliant inner radiance that dissolves all obstacles and bestows upon them a calm peace. We envision them becoming receptive to their intuitive guidance and empowered to act upon it. As we release each one into their indwelling power, we affirm that they are free to discover and claim wholeness, peace, and prosperity. And we hold that as the truth now and forevermore. Amen. So let us prepare for a time of meditation now. We invite you to become comfortable and to breathe. As we move deeply into this time of meditation, we bring our home country into our awareness, America, the land of hope, of dreams, of promise, of thee we sing, for thee we pray. Breathing deeply, we just let go of any ambiguity about our nation and return to the times when it was more simpler to love this land, America, the new world, a place of wide open plains, mighty rivers, and miles and miles of unexplored grandeur. America lives in the hearts of her people. America is an ideal as much as it is a place. It is the ideal of a country where all people are welcome. All people are equal. All people are free. The birthing of this ideal has not come easily, making manifest the vision of our forefathers has required years of struggle, times of seeming failure, seeming injustice, seeming defeat. Yet the dream lives on. We still see that noble country, home of the brave, land of the free. Perhaps we have been charged with the mission of enlarging this vision to encompass the planet. Perhaps we as 21st century humans will at last hold to the truth that all men are brothers, all women are sisters, all people have the right to be free. We see our own nation as the flagship of this new world a world where each country is honored and appreciated for its history, its culture, its unique place in the tapestry of life. So beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. Let us take the image of the beauty of our country and its people into the silence. 
Returning to this time of sanctuary, we grow in the awareness that our country was founded in God mind and abides in God heart. We allow it and all other countries to unfold into world destiny, a destiny where peace reigns and love rules. This is our prayer, the prayer for our global family and our earthly home, now and forevermore. Amen. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. Thank you, Heart Dream. Thank you. I love your version of that song. So we are to the point in our service where we're actually going to have uh, what we don't call a sermon. <laughs> we're having our Sunday lesson, which is also called the Sunday Talk. And today it's entitled The Crack in the Cosmic Egg. And we are discussing the spiritual implications of terminating a pregnancy. You need to know that ministers all over the country have been struggling with how they were going to talk to their congregations about the recent ruling of the Supreme Court. I belong to several ministerial groups and uh, it's just gone on and on and on causing great distress. So as we discuss this, we are going to talk about why it causes such a turmoil when our right to do so, to terminate a pregnancy is threatened. We will look at this multi-level issue from three different perspectives. The first is unity's response to the Supreme Court ruling. The second is traditional religious views, Christian and other, on abortion. And the third is the deeper metaphysical significance of this turmoil and this time in history. 
And so we begin by sharing from the recent statement, which was released by Unity's parent organization, which is the Unity Worldwide Ministries. I'm going to, to read one paragraph aloud. You can go to their website if you want to read uh, the entire statement, but this one paragraph captures the essence of it. Unity Worldwide Ministry believes that all human life is sacred and worthy of respect. Because of our deeply held spiritual beliefs regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion, we stand for the rights of women to make their own decisions concerning their bodies and their medical treatment. We believe that reproductive rights are human rights, which do not require government intervention and we will advocate for those rights based on the foundational principles of our faith. It's very well written. And whereas this statement addresses women's rights, it does not broach the question of the morality of terminating a pregnancy. Because Unity's other teachings when taken as a whole address that issue. When I provide spiritual counseling concerning abortion, I stress two things. First, that in this, as in all things, unity counsels folks to go to God first, then to follow divine guidance in pursuing action in the outer world. Unity does not take a stand for or against abortion. Unity takes a stand on the individual's right to follow the guidance they receive in, in prayer. The second thing I stress regarding abortion is the eternal validity of the soul. Unity teaches that each soul is an expression of God, eternal and indestructible. We have always existed and will always exist. It is the notion that souls are created in the womb at some point between conception and birth that has led to the heated debate over terminating a pregnancy. And this notion leads us to the second part of today's talk, which is the role that religious views play in our justice system. Christianity did not always teach that souls are created in the womb. Until 553 CE, the church accepted the doctrine of pre-existence, which is the pre-existence of the soul. It was at the Second Council of Constantinople that this doctrine was outlawed and declared a heresy. And this was a big deal. If you teach something that has been declared a heresy, you can be excommunicated, you can be executed. Outlawing this doctrine also eliminated any reference to reincarnation in Christian theology. But there are still some references in scripture, and I've got three to share with you that, that indicate the pre-existence of the soul. The first is Jeremiah 1.5. This is God speaking. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And the second one is from Psalm 139, and this is David speaking, speaking to God. Thine eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. 
And the third is from Ephesians. This would be Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 4. Paul speaking. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. I have been to seminars uh, by people who say scripture was rewritten after the preexistence of the soul was declared a heresy and references to that were removed. Think about some of the basic teachings and practices of the Christian churches, especially the historical Catholic Church. They teach that human souls are created in the womb. After humans die, they spend eternity in heaven or hell based on their behavior while on earth. And this behavior is determined by the church. If a newborn dies before it is baptized by a priest, it cannot go to heaven. It goes to limbo. And if a person dies without last rites administered by a priest, and that includes the absolution for sins, they cannot go to heaven. Though there are many more details involved and much history about how these teachings evolved, we can conclude a couple of important things. The first is that these teachings gave great power and control over the population to church authorities. And secondly, that they have influenced our justice system and our everyday morals often in ways that are invisible to us. They are invisible base assumptions in our society that we take for granted that that is the way it is because we never heard any different. It was just assumed. All of the traditional Christian denominations teach that souls are created in the womb and that the afterlife experience depends on earthly obedience. It is interesting to note that the Mormons believe in the pre-existence of the soul, however. Some of the other world religions teach about reincarnation. In some Eastern spiritual traditions, abortions is viewed in a different way. There are many people who believe that the spirits of the unborn have countless opportunities to incarnate. And so if a mother chooses not to give birth, it doesn't mean the spirit can't try again. The view that the unborn are spiritual beings that deserve our love and respect is shared. But women who have abortions are spiritual beings as well, and it is their right to choose. To have an abortion is part of the cosmic cycling of spirit from life to life. In Eastern spiritual traditions, death is viewed differently, not as final, and life is still deeply cherished. And in the Jewish faith, and I think this may be my favorite one of all, in the Jewish faith, there is no teaching of an afterlife. Their teachings about abortion are well-defined and strikingly different from Christian thought. Life does not begin at conception under Jewish law. Sources in the Talmud note that the fetus is mere water the fetus is mere water before the 40th day of gestation. And then after the 40th day, the fetus is considered a physical part of the pregnant individual's body, not yet having life of its own or independent rights. The fetus is not viewed as separate from the parent's body until birth begins and the first breath of oxygen into the lungs allows the soul to enter the body. 
Jewish law advises abortion if the pregnancy causes any risk to the mother's physical or mental health. So in viewing these different ways, once again, please notice the Christian influence on the American justice system and the roots that it had. And all of this brings us to the title of today's talk, which is the crack in the cosmic egg. And I do have uh, one PowerPoint slide. I have not had good luck with PowerPoint today, but I'm going to put it up anyhow. All right. Because so I wanted to, to mention these two books. The title of today's talk is based on the book, The Crack in the Cosmic Egg, New Constructs of Mind and Reality. It was first published in 1971 and a new version was released in 2002. It's by Joseph Chilton Pierce. I read this in the 70s and it changed my life. The basic idea of the book described in an eggshell is the sum total of our notions of what the world is and what we perceive its full potential to be form a shell of rational thought in which we reside. The logical universe creates a vicious circle of reasoning that robs our minds of power and prevents us from reaching our true potential. To step beyond that circle requires a centering and focus that today's society assaults on every level. So now take that idea and blend it with the metaphysical teaching of the creative power of the mind. In this series of books that Carlos Castaneda, here's one of them, wrote about the Yaqui shaman Don Juan, Don Juan often described seeing humans as luminous eggs. He said, our consciousness exists within an energetic belief structure with our experiences being the projection of these beliefs reflected back to us on the inside of the eggshell. So you see how much alike these two ways of thinking are. Okay. We have created our world. We have created our life experiences and the reactions we have to them with the power of our minds. We have forgotten that we do this. The collected beliefs that we have formed and acquired throughout the millennia of earthly existence are part of our race consciousness, but they are not all true. They are part of our consciousness because we have been taught them. We have believed them and we have experienced their reflection as we project them into the world. This world that we have created, this world that reflects so much violence and injustice back to us. There comes a time in the evolution of a species when that species is preparing to make a cosmic jump into a higher dimension. And we are breaching the threshold of such a time. This jump requires that we become aware, that we become aware of the mechanics of reality creation, aware of the causes of our global suffering, and aware of the truth that will set us free. When the suffering that results from our erroneous beliefs reaches the breaking point, we may finally be willing to awaken to a different way of seeing. I saw a quote from Dan Rather who said, 
Sometimes major setbacks precede and even spur transformational victories. I think this is one of those times. And now I want to talk about the egg tooth. There is a phenomenon that happens when chicks, baby chickens, are inside eggs and are ready to hatch. They grow a tooth on the top of their beaks. And they use it first to puncture the membrane that has enclosed them during their development. And this allows them to access a little pocket of air at the end of the egg and to begin breathing. And then they use this tooth to peck through the shell, cracking it open so that they can hatch into the next level of their existence. And the tooth, when no longer needed, just falls off. Now, the idea that nature provides a tooth when needed for this purpose is amazing. The idea that this chick uses brute force to puncture his egg sac, the sac that has supported his existence, might seem terrifying. And that the chick goes on to destroy his shell, the shell which is housed and fed and protected him, that he is driven to hammer at it, breaking it open so that he can forever leave it, is equally terrifying. And that the chick does all of this in order to become part of a brand new world, to burst into the sunlight of a different time and space is astonishing. We humans are struggling to be hatched. We have outgrown our old shells and are ready to burst forth into a new way of being. Sometimes this transformation may seem violent. Sometimes we need literally to destroy the old structures to allow in the light of a new understanding. And so much of what is happening in our world can be compared to the egg tooth. We are creating social mechanisms that force us to reconsider our old assumptions. And in the process of breaking out of our restricted definitions, it can seem terrifying. There is so much more at stake than the rights we are fighting for. It goes much deeper than racial equality or gender rights or women's rights. We are awakening to what it means to be divine humans. And we are in a period of transformation that will lead us into a new age, an age in which we fulfill our destiny. So what is your role? What is your role during this time of transition? Your role is to go to God first and then to take action in the outer world as God guides you to, to recognize and follow your calling. And some folks are called to lead protests or other forms of social activism. And many folks, especially those attracted to Unity's teachings of prayer and meditation, find themselves filling the role of faith keeper. The faith keeper is a Native American tradition. The role of the faith keeper is to remain peaceful and calm while maintaining spiritual enlightenment and understanding no matter what the tribe may endure. Under extreme conditions, if every single tribe member stumbles into fear or doubt or anxiety, worry and pain, the faith keeper maintains peace, spirituality and understanding. Therefore, the faith keeper is looked upon as the reminder of the I am presence of God, the presence of the great spirit of the creator. In closing, 
as you go forth today to continue celebrating our holiday weekend and the, and the birth of our country. And as you encounter signs of strife and discord in our world, know that you can fill one of the most important roles of all. You can resist the fear and anger being expressed by so many. And you can be a stand for peace, for faith and love and harmony. You can behold the new world in your heart and hold that vision steady like a lighthouse to guide all of the tribe through the seeming darkness to the safety of the new shore. You can hold fast to the truth that God is in the midst of every situation, providing an underlying divine order, guiding us and loving us, loving all of us all the time. And thus ends our lesson. That was awesome. That was perfect as always. You two are so connected, just so connected. 
So we're going to uh, take a moment to bless our love offering. Remember that you are a vital part of this spiritual community, that each Unity Church is self-supporting through their own contributions. We know it is through your support that we're able to provide our services, and we thank you. We thank you for the many ways that you contribute to this congregation with your time, your talent, and your treasure. And these days where we don't meet in person every Sunday, we like to provide you with other ways to send your donation in. There's a post office box at the top of the screen. Some people do mail us checks. And there's also donate buttons on our website and in our newsletter that would allow you to use PayPal. And so let's take a moment to bless all the love offerings that have come in as we together say, divine love flowing through us, blesses and multiplies all that we are, all that we have, all that we choose to give, and all that we are open to receive. And thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. So we have a few announcements this morning. Our newsletter, which goes out every Friday, had the July calendar in it this past Friday. And you'll see that there are a lot of things coming up. Where you've become very creative. Next Sunday, which is July 10th, Lisa is leading a sound healing meditation at the Sylvan Community Center. And if you have never been to her sound healing meditation, you do not want to miss it. It is an out of the body experience with the different instruments she plays. If she plays the gong, you never hear of anybody playing a gong. And then when you hear it, it's just extraordinary. You never knew that those sounds could come out of a gong. Uh, you're being invited, if you wish, to bring your yoga mats. You can lie on the floor. I mean, this is really a meditative time. We want you to be comfortable. Then on July the 15th, I am having surgery for my breast cancer. It's a lumpectomy. It'll be a couple of weeks after that before the pathology reports are in and I've met with the oncologist and I know uh, what's going to happen next, what kind of treatment plan I'm going to need. So I am not speaking for the rest of the month of July. And Lisa and I have talked about being creative, like the sound healing meditation. We've got guest speakers scheduled for two Sundays, guest musicians when Lisa's speaking. And I'm thinking that from time to time, I may take a smaller role in the Sunday service. Maybe I'll just do the featurette and somebody else can do the talk. Maybe I'll just lead the meditation. Maybe I'll just show up. <laughs> and um, as time goes on, you know, they have said for a long time that the way of the church is dead, that the future of the church must change. You cannot keep on doing traditional church. This can be looked at as a golden opportunity for us to reinvent ourselves and to expand and to be creative. Um, and so we look forward to, you know, the, the hidden blessing and what otherwise may not seem to be a blessing. As always, those of you who are, who are here on Zoom, we invite you to stay and chat after the service and check in, let us know how you're doing. And we're going to invite Heart Dream now to lead us in the peace song. Let there be peace 
peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be with God as creator. Family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. This be the moment now With every step I take Let this be my joyous vow To take each moment And live each moment In peace eternally For our prayer for protection, we know that the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. May the love we share spread its wings and fly across the earth and bring new joy to every soul who is.